Why did the demons ask Jesus for the pigs? The fascinating story of Jesus casting out the legion of demons into a herd of pigs is found in the book of Luke. It all unfolds as Jesus travels through the hills east of the Jordan River, a predominantly Gentile region known as the Decapolis, Gentile cities of the broader region. They then sail to the region of the garrisons east of Galilee. Upon stepping on solid ground, a man from the city of Gerasa, possessed by demons for a long time, approached Jesus. He wore no clothes dwelling among the tombs. Seeing Jesus, he let out a terrible scream from the depths of his throat, falling in terror before him, shouting with all his might, What have we to do with each other, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you, do not torment me before the appointed time for judgment. Jesus was already commanding the unclean spirit to leave the man who had been violently seized many times by the demon, kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles. Yet he would break these restraints, being led by the demon into the wilderness. Luke 8, 26, 29, Amplified Bible. This is the most detailed description of a man under demonic control in the Bible, a classic profile of demonic possession. For a long time, the man lived under the demon's dominion behaving like a wild animal rather than a human. Stripped of clothes, he roamed among the tombs, a violation of Jewish law and natural human inclination. Possessing abnormal strength, he would break his chains, screaming and hurting himself day and night, residing in the mountains among the tombs. His internal struggle was uncontrollable, and his wild behavior led people to conclude that he was possessed by a demon. Attempts were made to restrain him to prevent harm to others, but he managed to break free from the chains on several occasions. In the end, they expelled him from the city, and he ended up living in the local cemetery, harming the only person he could, himself. The Bible describes his guidance by demons in the same way it depicts a horse guided by its rider, or a ship rowed by its crew. We also read that a certain man came to meet him, suggesting that Jesus didn't directly seek out this man, but rather that the man was drawn to Jesus. The man couldn't free himself, but Jesus had complete authority over the spirit. What do I have to do with you? I implore you, do not torment me, said the demonic spirit inhabiting the possessed man, not the man himself. The demon didn't want to leave the body it inhabited. Demonic possession occurs when a demonic spirit resides in a human body and sometimes manifests its own personality through the host's personality. While demonic possession is a reality in the current world, we must be cautious not to ignore the problem or overly emphasize supposed demonic activity. We aren't told how someone becomes possessed by a demon. Superstitions, occult games, supposedly harmless practices of spiritualism, new age deception, magic and other practices open the door to believers being deceived and facing demonic danger. People often engage in the occult or demonic things because there seems to be something that works there. Unfortunately, there is someone operating there a demonic spirit. Demons want to inhabit bodies for a similar reason to a vandal wanting a spray can. A body is a weapon that can be used in their attack against God. Demons also attack humans because they disdain the image of God, seeking to distort and pervert that image. Demons have the same goal regarding Christians, to tarnish the image of God. However, their tactics are limited concerning Christians as they were disarmed by Jesus' work on the cross. Though they can deceive and restrict Christians by ensnaring them with fear and disbelief. In Colossians 2.15, Amplified Bible, it says, When he had disarmed the rulers and authorities, those supernatural forces of evil operating against us, he made a public example of them, exhibiting them as captives in his triumphal procession, having triumphed over them through the cross. So again the plea, I implore you, do not torment me, is ironic, considering the man was frequently and relentlessly tormented by demons dominated in body, mind, and soul. He feared that Jesus might also torment him, Luke 8.30, 33, Amplified Bible. Jesus asked for the man's name, and he replied, Legion, as many demons had entered him, continuously pleading not to be sent into the abyss. Nearby, a large herd of pigs was passing on the mountain, the demons begged Jesus to let them enter the pigs, and he granted permission. The demons left the man, entered the pigs, and the herd rushed down the slope, drowning in the lake. Jesus asked for the name not to gain authority over the demon, 
His authority surpassed the superstitions of the time. Likely, he inquired to understand the full extent of the problem, knowing the man was possessed by many demons, not just one. A legion in Roman terms usually consisted of 6,000 men, implying the man was possessed by a significant number of demons. These demons inhabiting the man didn't want to be confined to the abyss. The bottomless pit described in Revelation seems to be a place of imprisonment for certain demonic spirits. These demons preferred action to idleness as they left the man and entered the pigs. The idea that demons can inhabit the bodies of animals might seem strange, but it's also shown in Genesis 3. It was fitting that these demons were cast into pigs, animals not considered kosher. Note that even demons cannot afflict pigs without God's permission. A demon cannot enter pigs without being sent by God, showing the limited power and malice they have when faced by those under God's protection and defense. Satan, inclined to evil, would resort to practicing it on animals if unable to do so with humans. Jesus allowed this because the time for a complete demonstration of his authority over demons had not yet come. That would happen on the cross, Colossians 2.15, Amplified Bible. At the cross, Jesus disarmed the demons in their attack on believers, publicly displaying their defeat and triumphing over them, Colossians 2.15, Amplified Bible. The demonic spirits caused the herd of pigs to act erratically, running uncontrollably down the slopes until they eventually drowned in the lake. This demonstrated the destructive power of the spirits, as well as their commander. This incident revealed the true intention of these demons, to destroy humanity, just as they destroyed the pigs. Some may find it unfair to the owners of the pigs, but they lost their property and learned that Jesus valued human life more than a herd. Spurgeon made several insightful observations about how the demons affected the pigs. The pigs preferred death over being under demonic control. If men were not worse than pigs, they would have the same opinion. When the demons drove the pigs to a bad market, the devil essentially led his pigs to a ruinous end. Upon witnessing the event, the shepherds fled and reported to the city and surrounding areas. People came to see what had happened, found the man from whom the demons had departed sitting at Jesus' feet, clothed and in his right mind. This astonished them. Those who witnessed it shared the story of how the demon-possessed man had been healed. However, the whole multitude of the Gadarenes and the neighboring regions asked Jesus to leave, overwhelmed by fear. Jesus, understanding their fear, entered the boat and returned to the west side of the Sea of Galilee. The people were more afraid of a man freed from demons than of one possessed. They were terrified to see the man in his right mind at Jesus' feet, unable to comprehend. Despite the positive impact of Jesus' work, the crowd, disturbed by his presence, asked him to depart. They were more afraid of what Jesus would do in their lives than of what Satan was doing. When people fear the transformation Jesus brings more than the works of Satan, it leads to a counterproductive situation. In this case, a whole city gathered against their own blessing in a prayer meeting, praying against their own good. It was a dreadful nature of prayer, but it was heard, and Jesus departed from their domains. When people are more afraid of what Jesus will do than of what Satan is doing, it results in an unfortunate outcome. At times, people may push Jesus away, and he may depart if asked. However, the man from whom the demons had departed pleaded to go with Jesus, Yet Jesus sent him away, saying, Return home and tell all the wonderful things God has done for you. So the man departed and proclaimed throughout the city the great things Jesus had done for him. The man, once possessed by demons, became known by a wonderful name, perhaps for the rest of his life, recalling the remarkable work Jesus had done for him. Initially, this demon-possessed man sat at Jesus' feet, but later he desired to be with Jesus as a disciple. People came to see what had happened, finding the man at Jesus' feet clothed and in his right mind. This astonished them. The man's desire for Jesus illustrates the change that occurred in his heart. Initially interested in what Jesus could do for him after encountering God, he wanted Jesus himself. However, Jesus rebuked him, instructing him to leave. Despite the man's good intention to follow Jesus, Jesus was well aware that the ministry he could perform for his family and community held greater significance than any other work. Understanding God's ways can be challenging. Jesus heeded the unfortunate request of the city residents who prayed for him to leave, and so he did. 
Though the man who had been freed from demons made a heartfelt request to be with Jesus, Jesus responded, This is not the prayer. The reason was clear. The man could be a light among the Gentile cities in a way Jesus and his disciples couldn't be. If he lived in fear, which he likely did, considering the demons could return, he wouldn't be able to fulfill that role. Despite his longing to be with Christ, Jesus dispelled his fear and essentially said, You don't need to be close to me. I have healed you so completely that you will never be sick again. He embarked on this path and proclaimed throughout the city the great things Jesus had done for him. This was an incredible message to share, and every follower of Jesus should be able to preach it. His story demonstrated the worth of a life to Jesus, as that was the sole reason why Jesus came to this side of the Sea of Galilee. His narrative also showcased that with Jesus, no one is beyond hope. If this man could be transformed, then anyone can. Jesus told him to share about the great things God had done, and the man indeed shared with others the marvelous deeds of Jesus. There was no contradiction because Jesus is God,